the purely American supercar was full of potential when it debuted in the 1990s. However, the Dodge Viper slowly became a marvel of the past. The 1990s saw the rise of Weezer, a band with a simple yet obscure sound that captured the world's attention. However, the guys quickly faded out of their prime, and ever since they have become less popular. We can't say they're one-hit wonders, but we can't also describe them as legends of the past, much like the Dodge Viper. Today, we take you for a ride through the years of the Dodge Viper. I am not making the same mistake twice. This one, this one right here is mine. I don't care what they do with the rest of them. So, Bob, come here, Bob Lutz. Uh, we don't want to over-dramatize this. There's a gear shift. Uh, go build the damn thing, will you? Dodge Viper was conceived after a conversation between Chrysler's chief of design, Tom Gale, and its president, Robert A. Lutz, in 1988. As Gale walked by Lutz's office, the Chrysler president called him in. Lutz had an idea. The goal was to create something like a revised Shelby Cobra. Chrysler wanted their Viper to have a V10 engine to set it apart from the other sports cars. The Dodge Viper first launched in 1991. When it first appeared, the Viper wasn't the most comfortable car to drive, but its power compensated for that. Viper performance and comfort were improved over the years as it aged through its generations. When the Dodge Viper debuted in 1991, Chrysler didn't offer it to the general public. Instead, two pre-production models were served as the Indianapolis 500 pace cars. The Viper wasn't supposed to debut until 1992, but after the United Auto Workers complained about the Japanese-built Dodge Stealth serving as the pace car, well, Chrysler had a pivot to their American-made Dodge Viper. The concept Viper generated a significant amount of public interest after its exposure, and completed models arrived in dealer showrooms in 1992. <laughs> Dodge Viper, Dodge Stealth, Screen Therapy starts at a little over 18 too. The SR1 generation of the Dodge Vipers premiered to the public at the 1992 Detroit Auto Show with the model officially called the RT10. Since Chrysler designed the Viper as a performance car, it didn't come with many of the bells and whistles you might expect. There was no air conditioning, key cylinders, or exterior mounted door handles. Even more surprising, there were no airbags as Chrysler wanted to keep the weight down. The sleek, minimal design also came without a hardtop roof. Instead, the roof was made of a removable canvas. There were no permanent windows on the car either. The windows were made from vinyl which could be opened and closed with zippers. The lack of certain comforts in the car sent a clear message that this car wasn't meant to be a standard vehicle. The car was built for speed. The SR1 was offered from 1991 through 1995 with minimal changes to it. The second generation was launched in 1996 and was referred to by its codename SR2. This new Viper featured some redesigns and updates through its six-year run. Since it was a Viper, it also gained more power. The initial model offered in 1996 still came with the potentially dangerous side exhaust pipes, but by the middle of the year, they were gone. This model year went up to 410 horsepower and had 488 pound-feet of torque. At the end of 1996, a new Viper GTS Coupe arrived with even more power than the RT10. The GTS featured 450 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. With all of this power backing it, the car's top speed was 180 miles per hour, and it could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in close to 4.5 seconds. The 1998 Dodge gave both Viper options a few updates, such as lighter exhaust manifolds, a revised camshaft, and second-generation airbags. In 2000, Dodge improved the RT10's frame and gave it lighter hyper-eutectic pistons. In 2001, Dodge also added an anti-lock braking system. The last year of the RT10 and GTS models were offered in 2002. We've been telling you about Chrysler advantages for some time now. We've changed this company to give you even higher quality cars, faster and at lower cost. 
For those of us who forgot, it's called being competitive. In 2003, Dodge released the all-new Viper SRT10, replacing the previous RT10. To separate the generation of the Viper from the previous two, the Viper team significantly restyled the SRT10. It featured much more angled bodywork, giving it a sharper appearance. The restyled Dodge Viper's appearance matched its incredible power. The previous 8-liter engine was replaced by a 8.3-liter engine. The SRT-10's upgrade engine came with 500 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque. With all these changes, it went from 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds and completed the quarter mile in under 12 seconds. It also reached a top speed of 100 miles per hour. Buyers could also select the SRT-10 coupe in the iconic GTS blue exterior color with white stripes. In 2008, the fourth generation of the Dodge Viper arrived. This new generation was named the ZB2 and came with several new features and changes. One major design addition to the revitalized SRT-10 was the inclusion of a vented engine cover over the front of the car. The fifth generation Dodge Viper arrived in 2013 featuring greater power and the return of the GTS. Buyers could choose between the GTS or the SRT Viper. The SRT Viper came with some unique features that enhanced buyer comfort. Drivers could enjoy an 8.4-inch touchscreen and an Alpine surround system. Drivers were also happy to see cruise control, keyless entry, power seats, and heated seats included as options for the vehicle. In 2015, Dodge upgraded the engine to 645 horsepower. 2014 was a huge year for the big three in Detroit. The Mustang was getting a new face, the Corvette just got real sexy, and the Viper was back in full swing. The only problem is that you just uttered the words Corvette and Mustang, two of the most successful sports cars in the history of automobiles. Some believe the lack of strong sales numbers led to the discontinuation of the Viper in 2017. Others have suggested the car didn't continue because Dodge couldn't redesign it to meet safety regulations requiring side curtain airbags. The Corvette Z06 that came out subsequently was not only more striking with intensely aggressive body lines, but it was also significantly cheaper than the Viper at all trim levels. The Viper was only marginally quicker around the track than the mighty Z06 until the SRT team at Dodge came out with the ACR, a production lap record machine. Viper production officially ended on the week of August 14th. Hey, hey, there you have it, the story on the Dodge Viper. Did you have one or maybe wish you had one? Or hey, what was your experience? Leave us the comments below. As usual, thanks to all of our subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, leave us a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications. Again, thank you for watching the Boker Brothers YouTube channel.